Hey guys, it's Mark from Ace Tutors, and I'm going to teach you how to solve any optimization problem in Calc 1. This topic is one of the most important concepts explored in Calc 1, and often the one students struggle with the most. Now if you haven't already seen our video on finding maximums and minimums, take a quick look at that because you'll need some of that info for this video. If you've already seen that or any of our other videos and found them helpful, go ahead and smash that like button to help us reach more struggling students. Alright, let's get into it. First, what even are optimization problems? At their core, an optimization problem is one where you are trying to maximize or minimize a function within certain constraints. For example, you might be asked to create a glass aquarium with a square bottom and open top. It needs to hold 4 cubic meters of water, but you also want to minimize how much glass you have to use. Using calculus, you can find the exact dimensions of the aquarium to achieve this. Another example problem might be one where you're trying to build a rectangular fenced-in corral. Fortunately, you can place this corral next to a river, so you only need to fence in three sides. You want to make it as big as possible, but you only have 100 feet of fencing. What would be the dimensions of the corral with the largest possible area? To learn how to go about solving these types of problems, let's jump right into this example. In order to solve any optimization problem, follow this process. First, we should always draw and label a picture of this scenario to help us visualize it. So for this, here's our nice little river and our three sides we need to fence in. Let's label the one side parallel to the river, some unknown x, and since it is a rectangle, let's label both of the sides perpendicular to the river, y, since we know they will be the same. Next, we need to find our objective and constraint equations. But what are these? All that an objective equation is, is the thing that you are trying to maximize or minimize. So for this problem, we want to maximize the corral's area so that is our objective equation. From our drawing, we can write the area as x times y. Now a constraint equation is then anything in the problem that we are constrained by. Since we only have 100 feet of fencing, that is our constraint. To find the total length of the corral, we just add up each of our sides to get that 100 feet must equal the length of x plus the length of y plus the length of y again. Now that we generated our objective and constraint equations, we can begin trying to solve the problem. Now remember, our goal or objective is to maximize area. If you recall from our video on maximizing and minimizing functions, all we have to do is take the derivative of that function, set it equal to zero, and solve. However, our area function has x's and y's in it and we don't quite know how to take derivatives of functions with multiple variables yet. So what do we do? Well, this is where the constraint equation comes into play. Using the constraint equation, we can solve for one of the variables within it and use that to get rid of one of the variables in the objective function. To see what I mean, let's isolate x in the constraint equation. To do that, we can subtract 2y from both sides to get that 100 minus 2y is equal to x. Now that we have that, our next step is to substitute it into our objective function. As a result, we get that our new area function is 100 minus 2y times y. Now we have an equation with just one variable and can take the derivative. To make it a little easier, let's multiply in the y from outside the parentheses to get that the area equals 100y minus 2y squared. Using the power rule, we find that the derivative is 100 minus 4y. And since we want to find where the area is maximized, we set the derivative equal to 0 and solve. To solve this, we can add 4y to both sides and get 100 equals 4y. Then we divide by 4 to get that y equals 25. Okay. That's what y equals, but how do we find what x equals? Fortunately, we have an equation from the constraint that tells us what x equals in terms of y. 
if we plug in our y value of 25, we find that x is equal to 50. And since this is a word problem, be sure to add in your units. The question uses feet, so we find that our final answer is x equals 50 feet and y equals 25 feet. To make sure we understand this process, let's do one more example. Let's return to the example from earlier where we want to design an aquarium that can hold four cubic meters of water while minimizing the amount of glass used. So first things first, let's draw and label our picture. From the question, we know that the base is square, so we can label both of those sides x. Then we don't know anything about the height, so let's just label that some other unknown y. All right, next step, we have to figure out what our objective and constraint equations are. Since our objective is to minimize the amount of material used, that becomes our objective equation. The amount of material used is synonymous with surface area, so let's calculate the drawing surface area. This is often one of the most difficult steps for a lot of students, but I find you can make it a lot easier if you just take the shape one piece at a time. For example, let's start with the surface area of the bottom side. It has edges of x and x, so the surface area is just x times x. For the front, we find that the area is x times y, and we find the same for each of the other vertical sides. Finally, since the question says it has an open top, we don't have to count that. Now we can put together the surface area equation as x times x plus x times y plus x times y plus x times y plus x times y, or simplified as x squared plus 4xy. Now that we have the objective function, let's find the constraint equation. In this problem, we are constrained by the requirement to hold a volume of 4 cubic meters of water. And the volume of our shape is length times width times height, so we find that our constraint equation is 4 equals x squared times y. Now, again, to minimize our objective function, we want to take the derivative and set that equal to 0. But our objective is composed of two variables, so we need the constraint equation to get rid of one of them. For this problem, let's isolate y. To do that, we can divide by x squared to get that y equals 4 over x squared. Next, we'll plug that into our objective equation to get that the surface area is x squared plus 4x times 4 over x squared. Multiplying in the 4x, we can reduce this to x squared plus 16 over x. Now to make the derivative a little easier, let's bring the x to the top, making it x squared plus 16 times x to the negative first. Using the power rule, we find that the derivative is 2x minus 16 times x to the negative second, or 2x minus 16 divided by x squared. Now, we set this equal to 0 because all minimums have a derivative of 0, and then we solve. Adding 16 over x squared to both sides and multiplying by x squared, we get 2x cubed equals 16. Then dividing by 2, and taking the cube root of both sides, we get x equals 2. Once again, we plug this back into our rearranged constraint equation and find that y is equal to 1. But don't forget your units. Adding those in, we find that x equals 2 meters and y equals 1 meter. To solve any optimization problem in Calc 1, remember to follow these five steps. First, Always draw and label a picture of the scenario to help visualize everything. Next, find your objective and constraint equations. Then use the constraint equation or equations to reduce the objective function to an equation of only one variable. Then you can take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and finally solve for all of your variables. If you found this video helpful, Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so we can increase our reach to help more students like you. Thanks again for watching, and remember, you have big dreams. Don't let a class get in the way.